Continuing through Adexel's higher tier maths paper two from 2020. This is um, question 20, and it's a question which is involving probability trees. So we're told that there are red sweets and yellow sweets in a bag, and also that there are N, representing uh, the number there, red sweets in the bag, and eight yellow sweets in the bag. It says that Sajid is gonna take at random a sweet from the bag and eat it. And he says that the probability that the sweet will be red is seven out of 20. So we've got to show why that couldn't actually be the case. So if we try and represent this as a probability tree, then we can see that initially in our bag, we've actually got N red and we've got eight yellow in total. So I'm just gonna do that just to summarize what we've got. And if we say that this branch is red and this branch is yellow, then we can see that the probability of getting a red is N out of, now the total number in this bag is actually N plus eight. So N out of N plus eight. And we're told that this probability, or Sajid says that this probability is gonna be seven out of 10. So if we create an equation there, we can say, well, N out of N plus eight, if Sajid is correct, is equal to seven out of 10. So we can try and solve this equation and see what value N would be. And it turns out actually that if N is not a whole number, then Sajid would be incorrect. So this is what we're gonna be looking at. So I'm gonna first of all multiply both sides by 10, just try and get things off the bottom line here. So I'm gonna, if I times both sides by 10, I'm gonna get 10N over the N plus eight equals seven. And next I'm going to times both sides by the N plus eight there. So I'm gonna end up with 10N equals seven n plus eight and so this is an equation i can try and solve i've got 10 n if I multiply out the brackets is going to be equal to 7 n plus 56 i'm just making sure i've got enough space here so if i continue with this up here um i'm going to take 7 n away from both sides now so that will leave me with 3 n on the left of the equals equals 56 and then if i divide both sides by three now to cancel the three multiplying the n i've got the n equals 56 over three so if we try and work that out on the calculator i'm just going to do 56 divided by three and we can see that we get a decimal so 18.6 recurring. So 18.6 recurring, but n has to be an integer. So that can't be correct. So we need to say that. We need to say can't be correct. n must be an integer. So now if we turn our attention to the second part of the question, we're told that Sajid takes a first sweet from the bag, eats it, and then takes another sweet at random from the bag. And it says that given the probability that both sweets he takes will be red is three fifths. We've got to work out the number of red sweets in the bag. So again, we're gonna look at the probability tree. So here we are, we've got the, the red again on the top and the yellow there. And we know that originally we had N red and eight yellow. So as before, the probability of picking a red sweet initially is N over N plus eight. And then we could fill in the probability tree completely, but we're only really interested in the, the red part of it. So here we go, we've got another red there. So this is his second draw after this dotted line. And now the thing is, after he's removed another red sweet, we can say that the number of red sweets now in the bag is actually n minus one. And the total number of sweets that are in the bag will have gone down by one as well. So that means we've now got n plus seven sweets 
in the bag. So that's the probability of choosing our second red sweet, given that we've chosen a red sweet for the first one. So what we can do is we can say, well, we're looking for the probability of getting a red and then another red. And this is called independent probabilities. And because they are independent from each other, we can actually get this by multiplying these two probabilities together. So we can say it's n over n plus 8 times by n minus 1 over n plus 7. And what I'm going to do is just make that equal to 3 fifths. So now what I've got is an equation which I can solve and it'll end up being a quadratic equation as well. So if we look at that, we're just going to try and get everything off the bottom line so we can actually solve it. So if I multiply both sides of this equation by n plus 8, n plus 7, that will actually cancel the bottom of the, uh, the fractions on the left hand side. And I'll end up with n, n minus 1 will still be there. And that will be equal to 3 over 5 times n plus 8, n plus 7. Because I'll have times both sides by this. So it will have cancelled these two num these two brackets on the bottom, but it will have multiplied this side of the equation. So we can see how we've ended up with what we've got there below. I'm also going to just multiply by five, just so I get rid of the fraction on the bottom there. And if I do that, the five will go on to the other side and I'll end up with five n n minus one equals 3n plus 8n plus 7. And what I need to do next is just multiply out these brackets. So if I do that, I'm going to get on the left hand side 5n squared minus 5n. So I'm just times in everything inside that bracket by the 5n at the front. Now, I think what I'll do is I'll just keep the three as it is. I'm just going to multiply these two brackets together. So I'm going to have n times n is n squared. Then I'm going to have n times 7 is plus 7n. Then I'm going to have 8 times n is plus 8n. Then I'm going to have 8 times 7 is plus 56. And I just need to multiply that out. And I, I can also collect up the terms there in the middle. So that would make 15n. So what I would get is 3n squared when I times that by the 3. And then 3 times 15n is going to give me 45n. And 3 times 56 is actually going to give me 168 so we can check that on the calculator if we want to. And so what I'm going to do, because we always do this with quadratic equations, we try and get everything over to one side of the equation and make it equal to zero. And we want the n squared term to be positive as well. So if I take away 3n squared from both sides, so I'm going to do everything in steps here. Take away 3n squared from both sides. I'm going to end up with 2n squared minus 5n equals 45n plus 168. And then I'm going to take away 45n from both sides. And that will leave me with 2n squared minus 50n equals 168. And now we just need to subtract the 168 from both sides. So if I do that, I'm going to end up with 2n squared minus 50n minus 168 
e equals zero. And this looks like a little bit of a horrible quadratic to solve. I can make it a bit easier because everything's an even number. So I'm just going to divide through by um, two. So if I divide through by two, everything by two, then I'm going to end up with n squared. 50 divided by two is 25. And then 168 divided by two is 84. We're going to be able to factorize this one because n has to be an integer. So I'm going to just write n and n at the front of the brackets. To find the factors, it can actually be a little bit tricky. Um, and a little get bit of a giveaway is that if this is a negative sign, then the only way we could get a negative number from two numbers being multiplied would actually be that one of them was positive and one of them was negative. So that's a little bit of a start. So what I'm looking for is numbers that will multiply to make 84. It turns out, in fact, three times negative 28, if I do that calculation, will give me minus 84. And we can see that if we were to add them together, we're hoping that we're going to get minus 25. And if we did three plus negative 28, we would get the middle term, we would get minus 25. So that's correct as well for that one. So we know our two numbers are going to be positive 3 and negative 28. So from that, we've got two possible answers for what n could be. The first bracket gives us that n would have to be negative 3 for the first bracket to be 0. And then we've got the second bracket would give us that n would have to be positive 28. So n would have to be 28 to make the second bracket 0. Now, we know that n can't be negative 3. So we can cross that one out and we can say, well, n equals 28 because n has to be a positive number as well. And that's it. We've completed the question. So I hope that's been helpful to you. And if it has, please give our video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to our channel. Thanks for watching.